Welcome back to day three of our 31 Days of Horror series. Today we're diving into the 2012 film, The Possession. All right, motherfucker, let's get it on. Think of it as a family drama snuggled up in a supernatural horror blanket. Feels kind of cozy, right? Well, not when the blanket's trying to smother you. So our story kicks off with a guy named Clyde, who is played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who is most famously known for his role as Negan on The Walking Dead. This guy must have been reading My Sock Summer's book on flipping stuff at yard sales and flea markets because that's where exactly where he goes, to a yard sale. But I guess he must have not finished the book completely because he picks out a creepy ass box. He doesn't even bother to look what's inside the box, he just buys it for his daughter. It's like having a map for a treasure, finding a treasure, and not bothering to look inside it. It's just completely bonkers and unreal. So he gives it to his daughter M, and as M gets more attached to the box, he starts acting out. Think about your typical teenage anger, but this time with more of a demonic twist. Clyde quickly realizes she's not just being a brat, she's possessed. He's all like, I thought this was just a phase, but nope, it's a full-blown horror movie now. So Clyde teams up with his ex-wife, played by Kara Cedric, because nothing screams let's fix our family like an exorcism. Eating of an orange is a lot like a good marriage. Just eat the damn oranges! They call in a Jewish exorcist, played by Maas Yahu. And let me tell you, the first time these two meet, it's almost comical. Maas Yahu is actually sitting on stairs and singing. It's just so corny. I mean, how often do you see a rabbi trying to exorcise a demon while balancing the family drama of his clients as well? It's like Divorce Court, the demonic edition. Now let's talk about the horror in this film. From the get-go, the possession ramps up the scares with its chilling atmosphere. You got the classic haunted house vibes with shadows lurking in corners and creaking floorboards that seem to have a life of their own. The film expertly uses sound to create a sense of dread. Those eerie whispers and the unsettling noises that echo through the house are enough to make you jump out of your skin. It's like the filmmakers took a page out of a horror playbook and cranked everything up to 11. As M becomes more possessed, the film doesn't shy away from showing her transformation into something truly terrifying. The visual effects are on point with M's facial contortions and those creepy demon-filled eyes that can make even the bravest souls shiver. The MRI scene is probably one of the creepiest where you see them do an MRI on her body with the demon trying to get out. The juxtaposition of her sweet innocence turned into a vessel for evil is disturbingly effective. It's like watching a beloved pet turn into a hellish creature. You want to look away, but you can't. The tension escalates as Clyde discovers that the malignant spirit tied to the box is a dibbuk, a restless spirit in Jewish folklore known for its sinister nature. This adds layers to the horror as viewers are treated to a glimpse of the demon's true intentions. You can feel the impending doom as the family races against time to save M and stakes couldn't be higher. The film balances moments of genuine horror with family dynamics, making every eerie moment hit that much harder. Ultimately, the possession plays on primal fears, losing loved ones, helplessness in the face of evil, and the terrifying notion that sometimes those we cherish can become something monstrous. Although it's been compared to The Exorcist, I would say The Exorcist is still a little bit more creepy than this film, but it's worth a watch. So if you're looking for a film that mixes scares with some family drama and dark humor, this one's a keeper. Just remember, don't buy any creepy boxes from yard sales. And if you do, make sure you look inside them. Your soul will thank you later. Thanks again for watching and be sure to check back tomorrow for our next installment of 31 Days of Horror.